My name is Dr. Cindy Miller, and today we will be discussing the ions involved in the cardiomyocyte action potential. This video is part one in a series of videos that explain how a cardiac muscle cell becomes electrically activated. In order to understand a cardiomyocyte action potential, we first need to discuss the main ions involved and how the cell controls their movements across the plasma membrane. To start, let's draw the cardiomyocyte, the cardiac muscle cell, as a circle in the center of the screen. For ease, we will divide the diagram in half. On the left side of the diagram, we will show the protein channels and carriers that are always active. On the right side of the diagram, we will draw the protein channels and carriers that are active only during the action potential. Let's first focus on one of the main protein pumps that are always active in a cardiac muscle cell, the sodium potassium pump. This pump uses the energy of ATP to pump three sodium ions out of the cell and two potassium ions into the cell. This process is an example of primary active transport as it directly uses energy from the breakdown of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, into ADP, adenosine diphosphate. The sodium-potassium pump actively transports sodium and potassium against their concentration gradient, creating a high concentration of sodium ions outside the cell and a high concentration of potassium inside the cell. These concentration gradients will become important when we discuss the cardiomyocyte action potential. There is one other pump that is consistently active that we must discuss, the sodium-calcium exchanger. This protein harnesses the sodium concentration gradient to pump calcium ions outside of the cell. This process is an example of secondary active transport as it utilizes the potential energy of the sodium gradient to transport calcium ions against their cal concentration gradient. The sodium-calcium exchanger is one of the main factors that leads to a high concentration of calcium ions outside of the cell. Now that we have examined the protein channels and carriers that are always active, we can focus our attention on the protein channels and carriers that are active only during the cardiomyocyte action potential. These are voltage-gated channels that will open and close in response to changes in the membrane potential, the charge difference across the plasma membrane. Each of the voltage-gated channels is specific for a particular ion and will open and close at different phases of the action potential. There are voltage-gated sodium channels, voltage-gated potassium channels, and voltage-gated calcium channels. These channels are examples of facilitated diffusion, so the ions will always move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Consequently, when the voltage-gated sodium channels open, sodium will diffuse into the cell. When voltage-gated potassium channels open, potassium will move out of the cell down its concentration gradient. When voltage-gated calcium channels open, calcium will move into the cell. In order to have room to examine the action potential, let's focus just on the protein channels that are activated during the action potential. These channels are located right now on the right side of our screen, so let's cover up the left side of our screen and move the diagram over. We now have all of the background information needed to understand a cardiomyocyte action potential. In our next video, we will examine how the three ions discussed today, sodium, potassium, and calcium, are responsible for the different phases of the cardiomyocyte action potential. Please be sure to view video 2, the cardiomyocyte action potential, for a full review of this mechanism.